language and symbols and situations that are more divisive than unifying at the time we want to show love for all of God's children. All right, welcome to this episode of Quick Show. We are covering what happened at BYU graduation. Was there a prophetic call given by Elder Holland last summer? Uh, we're going to bring a couple of these things together. The event that happened here at BYU graduation alongside uh, uh, Elder Holland's talk to faculty at BYU last summer. And it's, I think you've got to bring these two things together to see what he was thinking. A better, a better uh, you know, pulling back the veil a little bit and, and understanding what he was seeing and what he was concerned about going forward. So at the, this last weekend, uh, Julian Orr, a graduating senior at Brigham Young University, Received her diploma, turned and and opened up her robe, uh, which had a pride flag in it, and and she obviously wanted to garner some attention from this. She says she wants to go into public speaking, have a TED talk. You know, hey, kudos to her for a, a stunt like this because it'll probably give her. It has given her a ton of uh, a, a ton of attention on this, and she says it was for a message. Right, she wanted to give a message. I'll go over that in in just a minute. But I want to cover a couple of things, and, and I want to go back to Elder Holland's talk and what he said about this type of thing, and, and then I want to talk a little bit more about that pride flag. What does it mean? What does it mean to you? Is it the same thing that it means to me? Is it the same thing that it means to Jillian Orr? It, it's like so many other things these days. There, there's such a, a broad definition for a pride flag. I, I know people that will put a pride flag out in their on front on their lawn in their front lawn, and and others that would never use it, right? And and even though that they support and may have LGBTQ family members, but they separate themselves from the pride flag. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. First, let's revisit Elder Holland's talk last summer at BYU to the faculty and administration. Listen to what he says. We have spent hours discussing what the doctrine of the church can and cannot provide the individuals and families struggling over this difficult issue. So it's with a little scar tissue of our own that we are trying to avoid and hope all will try to avoid language and symbols and situations that are more divisive than unifying at the time we want to show love for all of God's children. Okay, so signs and symbols that are more divisive than unifying. And, and there's going to be obviously a cry out from the LGBTQ community, from the allies and others that would say, this is not divisive. We just want acceptance, right? We want the same thing that anybody else would have. There's an argument on that, obviously, back and forth, especially within uh, many religious institutions and belief systems. But I, I just think it's it's rather insightful what he's about to go through here. He's, he's saying we want to avoid these symbols. We want to avoid signs. And, and again, that would be on both sides of things, right? Both sides of, let's say, identity politics. These signs and symbols are not just what you might think they are. To many people, they are divisive. And again, that's signs on the left and signs that are on the right. Now, Elder Holland goes on to add additional insight here to what might happen in the future at BYU that can cause things to be more divisive, like a pride flag in your robe. If a student commandeers a graduation podium intended to represent everyone in getting a diplomas that day, hmm. in order to announce his personal sexual orientation, what might another speaker feel free to announce the next year until eventually anything goes? 
what might commencement come to mean or not mean if we push individual license over institutional dignity for very long. Okay. Well, again, very insightful, right? So we, we had uh, Matt Easton, who a few years back came out as gay in his valedictorian speech. And look, I have no problem with him coming out as gay. Uh, a lot of people had a problem with him doing it in the speech. It's like, why are you doing, this is not about you, right? This is not about you is what the argument was. Um, th this is about, you know, the thousands here that are graduating at BYU in this ceremony. And so when Elder Holland says he was commandeering that, you know, he really got a lot of pushback on this from a lot of good people, a lot of faithful people, but mostly from people that would, um, again, I'm not saying non unfaithful, I'm saying, but mostly from a lot of people that would be supportive of the pride flag, a lot of people that would be supportive of the LGBTQ agenda, both without and within the church. Now, having said that, with Elder Holland's talk last summer, I knew immediately that this was not going to make any change to anybody. Uh, I, very, very few. Maybe there's a handful of people that, that actually change. But as far as the faculty goes, those that are bent on this thing, I guarantee you there are a number of faculty members that were rah, 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 rah with this display here of the pride flag at, at graduation. And again, if, if anybody wants to display a pride flag on their own, oh, great, you do what you want. I have zero problem with that. Do what, you know, whatever you want. The question is, is a place like BYU and graduation ceremony the right place to do anything like that? And apparently, when, when there's activi activism involved, anything, anywhere is, is where it is acceptable. So his words matter. Elder Holland's words matter. And he does see something here that could have been a problem. And now we've got, you know, not as big of a deal here with the uh, with Jillian Orr and her and her robe. But still, it's the same idea. And, and what will happen next time as people see this and want to make a statement and want to use a, a public forum like graduation to make that statement? And look, I'm all for supporting the LGBTQ community. And a lot of people that follow the podcast here don't like me saying that. But, but I, I have no problem in supporting the LGBTQ community in terms, of, in, in terms of offering tolerance, in terms of offering love, in terms of offering support, in terms of outreach, right, and respect. I'm, I'm a big fan and supporter of the North Star Organization which is a faith-based organization that it outre it, with an outreach effort to the LGBTQ community, to those that would experience same-sex attraction, but want to s adhere to a faithful perspective and, and a covenant path approach. Those types of organizations and those types of individuals, by the way, do not get a big enough platform within the church, and, and it's shameful. It's shameful, both from those that support the LGBTQ community and, and our allies and those that don't, right? You, the, we, we need to give a bigger voice to faithful, covenant-keeping LGBTQ individuals. And I've tried to do that a little bit on this podcast. Now, before I get into the news coverage of uh, Jillian Orr and her, her graduation here, and break that down a little bit. I just want to add this in because I think this is important. Because I think that I think that what I'm trying to say here and the approach that I try to take is is I'm trying to do the same thing here that well number 1 that's the way I feel and and number 2 this is the approach that Elder Holland takes. In that spirit, let me go no farther before declaring unequivocally my love and that of my brethren for those who live with this same-sex challenge and so much complexity that goes with it. Too often, the world has been unkind 
in many instances, crushingly cruel to these, our brothers and sisters. Okay, I just wanted to get that in. I think it's important to hear that for some of you, for all of you, right? I think that this is an important thing to understand. Again, this is clear thinking from Elder Oaks on this issue. It is not all the way to one side and all the way to the other, right? We, we take a, 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 an approach that is understanding of both sides of the coin. That doesn't mean that we are um, compromising the commandments or compromising the covenant path. That's not what it means. It means that there is love and mercy and effort um, without compromise, you need both. You, you got to have both of those things. Now, on to the news coverage on this. There was a graduation ceremony here at BYU over the weekend. One student revealed a very colorful display, and she says she did that for herself and for other LGBTQ students here at the campus. I wanted to do something that was, you know, a protest in a civil manner that showed that we would be seen and that we would, you know, be recognized. Jill or Okay, obviously there's no problem with her giving her beliefs and and her statements and and her activism. The question is is is, is BYU graduation really the place to do this? She's making a statement not just about her beliefs, she's making a statement against BYU. Right, and she says that basically as she goes through this. Uh, so it's an, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's against BYU. It's against the um, and 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 it's not just an issue of of just an issue of policy. That's the thing, right? This is not as easy as just saying, you know, there's an honor code issue here that has to do with, um, I, I don't know, you're, you're you know wearing a beard, right? Um, the, the issue with this is it goes so much deeper because it is has to do with the doctrine of the church. So by proxy, you can you can say this with uh, that, that you're protesting BYU, but, but what you're really doing is you're protesting the church and its doctrine. And again, if that's what she feels she wants to do, but to protest BYU, knowing that this is the doctrine of the church, that's where I, I have an issue on this. She says that she wants herself and other LGBTQ individuals to be seen and recognized. So here's always the question. See, there's never a good follow-up question on these on, on TV news, right? What, what's the follow-up question to that? Oh, what does that mean to you to be seen and recognized? Because the policy at BYU, for example, is that there's no same-sex uh, affection that can be shown, right? And, and so is that what she's talking about? Because we need to be specific about these things, right? It's like I'm going to get into the flag here in a minute. There's a lot of different variations on this. There's a lot of different colors, right, to go through on, on what that means. What is she protesting? She says she's protesting in a civil manner. She is protesting in a civil manner. But what is she protesting exactly? And what it is, if, if KUTV could do their job or any TV news would actually do their job, they would ask what specifics are of this. Instead of just putting an emotional trigger out there, which is exactly what they try to do, just over the flag. What do you mean, Jillian Orr, about being seen and recognized? Because she may just mean affection on campus for same-sex couples, or she might mean something much more than that. It would be nice for her to say that. It would be nice that she was asked that. And then a follow-up question to that might be, well, did you know what the honor code was when you came to school? And this is the thing that's, that's always struck me as very odd with this whole argument at BYU and trying to change the policies of, of same-sex affection at BYU. It is known by everyone up front when you read the honor code what the policies are. Now, that may be before a student comes out. It's very common for students to come out while they're in that period of time away from home and with other friends and starting out to being an, uh, uh, being an adult. But they certainly already know what the policy is. 
The church isn't trying to hide anything here. BYU isn't trying to hide anything. There are approximately 5,300 colleges and universities in the United States. But yet for some, the, the handful of universities left that have a policy similar to BYU's, they also have to be lockstep with all of the rest of the universities, regardless of whether it is a religious institution or a privately owned institution. And that's the problem. There are over 5,000 choices to get a degree. Why does BYU need to change when there are so many different opportunities and options where you can get a degree? Now, I've heard a couple of arguments on this. One is that it's so cheap and they can't afford to go anywhere else. Well, keep in mind that that faithful Latter-day Saints who pay their tithing are paying for your education. Right? That's why it's so cheap. I think that's an important thing to understand. The second argument is, well, I, I came out or I didn't know who I was. I didn't have my identity formed yet. I didn't know till I was you know, a, a sophomore or a junior in college. Well, okay, that's understandable. I think that's, again, that's a common time to come out. But you, you knew the whole time who BYU is. So you've changed you knew what the honor code was going in. You knew what it was the second time. You had your interview every year with a bishop. And you knew, but now you want the school to change when there's over 5,000 other choices. And yes, I understand that you take all your religion classes and everything else. Well, that's part of BYU. That's what they do. You knew that also going in. BYU is a specific place, not everywhere has got to be lockstep to your idea of identity politics. This past weekend, she had the chance to walk during graduation. She used the opportunity to make a statement. What is something I could do to honor what I had been through and honor what others are going through at the same time? Jill is bisexual and says she and other LGBTQ students have struggled at BYU. She and her sisters settled on this, a way to visibly protest and show support. A rainbow flag sewn on the... Okay, so she says she wanted to make a statement. You know, again, I, I fine. It's just, is this the right place to do it um, at a church university? Secondly, she says that there are, that she's struggled and others have struggled here at BYU. Again, it's, it's, I don't think it's right not to be specific on this. And I'm not saying this is her fault. Uh, this could very well be the news organization. It probably is. Um, either for not asking the right questions or, or for editing the questions and the answers and just trying to keep, again, an emotional trigger point. But how have they struggled? Again, I, let, let it all out. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it because it's, it's, otherwise it's, people are confused, and I think some people want that. Talk about it. What are the issues specifically? Does she have an issue? with same-sex uh, affection on campus? What is it that you've struggled with? Do you struggle with the doctrine of the church? Is that part of the struggle? And, and is that part of what she's protesting of, 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 of marriage between a man and a woman in the temple? Clarity is important. Specifics are important. Now, what exactly does the pride flag mean? Well, there are actually a number of different flags, and many of them do not go along with church doctrine. Right, the idea of a nuclear family, a traditional nuclear family, a pansexual, bisexual, aromanticism, uh, transgender, a number of things. And it's not that, that they don't go along with um, the doctrine of salvation. It's that they don't go along with the doctrine of exaltation. And that's what the church shoots for. It shoots for exaltation. But what does the the pride flag mean to you? Because it means a lot of something. Again, it's it's just like the TV interview here that they did with her. It's such a poor job of interviewing her. What 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 does the pride flag mean? Because it can mean a lot of different things. You might think it's something, and I might think it's something completely different. You might use it because you want to support someone in your family that has uh, 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 an identity as LGBTQ. 
or you may not want to use it, even though you have an LGBTQ member in your family because of other things that are associated with it. I'll give you an example. There are a, there are a number of people that are in the church, members of the church, faithful members of the church that are um, LGBTQ uh, or as some would identify as experiencing same-sex attraction that are faithful to their covenants, their temple-going, tithe-paying, church-going, uh, calling-filling members of the church. Some married, some not, right? Married to someone of the opposite sex. And they, many of them do not want to use the pride flag. Why would they not use the pride flag? Well, for the same reason that some of them, not all of them, but some of them will not identify as gay. Because to them, the word gay means something much further than, than, than experiencing same-sex attraction. It, it means a lifestyle and, and oftentimes a political bent that is something that they don't agree with, either one of those things. Those are the ones we don't give a voice to enough. We need more of a voice for those individuals. It's the same with the flag, right? They, they don't use the flag. They don't want to associate with the flag because of the other things that it represents. So the pride flag that was displayed here at uh, BYU graduation might mean something to you that is very different from me. It might mean something to the BYU student that is very different from you or I think of. But as Elder Holland said, these symbols are divisive. But if you go around BYU, you will find a lot of, a lot of faculty that are using those types of symbols because they're using it in a way that they see is supportive, right? The problem again is what else goes along with that? What else goes along with that? Because that same pride flag was used at the protest at BYU. That same pride flag is used to protest at the church building, their doctrine of temple marriage. So what does the flag really represent? Mm -hmm.